there you two are. Where have you bozo brains been? Sorry, we had to bring in a temporary recruit for tonight's club meeting. Yeah, I still have no idea why you brought me here. I should be reviewing the next Halloween special at my couch. If you want to talk about a Halloween special, you must come here for a special occasion. A special occasion. A better place. A better place. A better place. To tell a scary story. A scary story. Dang it, Frank. Will you stop doing that? Sorry. I'm still not following any of this. Look, newbie, in our club, the After Club Society, we talk about some of the scariest Halloween cartoon specials and episodes. But we're running dry for tonight. Junior here can't stop talking about the ice cream boy. Those two always have stories about this David Pumpkins fellow. Nobody has seen our other member, Brent, or even heard his voice as of late. And me, all I can do is serve some purple peanut butter snack to anyone while we listen. I got writer's block. Please tell us you got some good Halloween specials that you would like to share. Oh, sure. I have lots of them. Well, then let's hear it. I'm all ears. The special that I'm talking about has not one, not two, but three stories connected to a scary story contest filled with toxic love, multiple endings, and a possessed puppet. Submitted for the approval of the After Dark Society, I nicknamed this holiday gem the Tale of the Halloween Ogre. Scare Shrekless is a Shrek Halloween special that aired on October 28, 2010. Ever since the end of the Shrek movies, sort of, DreamWorks Animation still believe that they can still milk the Shrek franchise with a few holiday specials. There was the Christmas special Shrek the Halls and this Halloween special. Before the spin-off Puss in Boots, these specials were considered the good addition to the franchise, even better than movies 3 and 4. But personally, I think Scare Shrekless is the best Shrek holiday special. It is the perfect time to let the big scary looking ogre to be the main star in the middle of October. And what's interesting about this one is that it's an anthology story with a frame story that ties into the main plot. And we'll go over each of them and the full narrative on why this Halloween special brings screams and laughter. I have no other way to say it, but let's begin this new Once Upon a Time. It begins with Shrek's kids scaring off some trick-or-treaters. As he come outside to pick them up, his friend tried to scare him and Fiona with a surprise. Neither of them were phased by it because ogres do the scares. They don't fear anything. So Donkey and the others challenge Shrek to a scary story contest. Whoever stays along without shaking out will become the King of Halloween. Shrek, of course, accepts their challenge under one condition. He gets to pick the scary place to tell their stories in the dark. And he chose Duloc, the home kingdom of the first movie's villain, Lord Farquaad. Ever since he died, his kingdom has become abandoned and left in ruins, but there's a rumor going around that it's being haunted by his ghost. As they settle into the Dark Castle, Ginny becomes the first person to tell his true story, the Bride of Jinji. He visits the Muffin Man to explain that he got dumped by his girlfriend for being so full of himself, so he asks his papa to make him a new woman. While the Muffin Man makes the gingerbread woman, Ginny puts in a lot of sugar that wasn't part of the recipe. The gingerbread man ignores Emma's warning because all he wants is to have a woman that really loves him. After cooking her in the oven with a shrug of lightning, the Muppet Man gives Ginny some privacy to be with his new girlfriend, Sugar. The two frolic through Canyonland as the gingerbread girl expresses her love towards him, but it's only been seven minutes that they've been together as Sugar keeps showing Ginny her love, perhaps a little too much love. He tries to get a little me time, but his girlfriend will leave him alone even for a few seconds. Ginny tries to lose her, but she managed to catch up to him, which made her feel disappointed thinking that she wasn't good enough for him, she tries to win him back to try harder and put more makeup on herself, which makes things even worse. Ginny pushed Sugar into the mixer, finally receiving some alone time. But it looks like someone left the oven on because now his house is surrounded by an army of zombie sugars trying to get him. And Ginny ends his story with the gingerbread women eating him. The three pigs run away while the big bad will quits the contest because they were his ride home. However, Shrek contradicts Ginny's story as being a true story because he's still alive. Feeling embarrassed, Ginny runs away as well. The remaining players continue their game with Puss sharing his story, but he gets interrupted by Donkey with the next tale, Boots Motel. The duo checks into a haunted motel led by an old innkeeper who is secretly Prince Charming, where it ends with Puss dying while taking a shower. But the cat rejected the ending and decides to change it to undo his fate. The two animals fight back at each other over who's telling the story. It would seem Puss had the upper hand by having Donkey be eaten by a waffle monster. However, Donkey survived the monster and had Pinocchio spray Puss with water, frightening him instantly. 
Before Shrek and the others tell their next story, they realize the three blind mice are missing. That's because they're still inside Shrek's house. They never joined the group on their trip to Duloc. With that, Shrek, Donkey, and Pinocchio are the only ones left. It was time the ogre share his tale and the final story from the special, The Shrekker Sis. In this tale, Shrek visits Geppetto's house to babysit Pinocchio. The catch is, the puppet is acting completely out of control. According to Pinocchio, he's behaving so irrationally because the voice is in his head. Shrek does what he can do to calm him down and put him to sleep, but no matter what he does, the wooden boy keeps torturing him. After Shrek chewing him, the ogre throws him down the stairs and Jiminy Cricket pops out of Pinocchio's head, revealing that it was his content that had been telling him to do all the bad stuff throughout the night, and it ends with Pinocchio squishing the bug, presumably not doing his Jimmy Stewart impression. Back in the Dark Castle, Pinocchio refused to accept that story being true, but when Shrek shows him a cricket, the ogre is now left alone with Donkey as the two finalists. Shrek believes the best thing they can do for now is wait for Lord Farquaad's ghost. He believed the spirit might be coming after Donkey because he did get rid of him with the help of his white dragon. Donkey tries to stay determined on winning the Halloween game. Suddenly, all the furniture starts to hover, a strange voice keeps calling his name, and a suit of armor comes towards the hero. This ultimately scares Donkey away, leaving Shrek as the sole survivor. But it turned out to be a trick by Shrek, Fiona, and the baby ogres. And to celebrate their victory, they decide to throw some eggs at the seven dwarves. So, what you're saying is, it's about a bunch of fairy tale characters telling some scary stories based off some existing horror tales? Uh huh. That seems interesting. Are they always like this? Well, yes, it is a franchise that makes fairy tale spoofs, so why not mock some horror movies? They're not only scary and funny, but they also show some tie into the Shrek universe. I do like the idea that they have a Halloween contest and have it set in Duloc. It showed what actually happened to the place after Lord Farquaad died. It did reveal some answers of what became in that place after the villain was defeated. I also love that they bring back the information singing booth for the first movie and actually make it into a creepy version. It's hard to believe that someone put in a lot of effort to bring back the choir and have the dolls be each other during the song. And then laugh when you're dead, do not get it's a creepy place. It's a scary world after all. When we get to the first story of the special, it actually explores more of the characters from the previous installments like the Muffin Man. We know in Shrek 2 he helped bake the giant gingerbread man Mungo, but how did he bring him to life? Well in this tale, he's given a Dr. Frankenstein flair where he lets lightning strike the oven to bring his cookie people to life. It's really interesting that a gingerbread person has a personality or behavior depending on the cooking recipe, or what happens if you ignore the instructions. Speaking of which, when Sugar starts expressing her love for Gingy, she brings in a lot of hyperactive energy. She has the creepy vibe of the stalker that refused to leave him alone for a second, even go as far as getting Gingy to fall into the mixer with her. I guess you could say Gingy got a taste of his own medicine for either how he was behaving towards his ex or ignoring the Muffin Man's warnings. But that was Act 1 of Sugar's scare factors. Her second order of business was when Ginny's story turned into a Night of the Living Dead episode. The sugar clones are horribly disfigured, thousands of them surrounding the gingerbread house to smother Gingy, and their twisted voice keeps on repeating together forever. The best part about his new girlfriend is that she's played by Christian Schell. She brought a lot of energy to make sugar into a gingerbread person that's trying to be the girl of Gingy's dreams. Afterwards, she has grown to be one of the most famous voice actors in animation with some of her iconic characters. In fact, before the Halloween special, she also played another Shrek character in the franchise, one of Robo Stilson's Wicked Witches. Maybe I'm not pretty enough. I can be pretty, really pretty. You have the right to shut your mouth! It was a shame Gigi had to leave the content because he was caught lying about his story being true. But no matter if it was real or simply made up, it was still the scariest Halloween tale. As for Boots Motel, this one was obviously meant for laughs than to be scary. But I still enjoy it nonetheless. Whenever Puss tries to change his ending or bring in the Waffle Monster to scare Donkey, I can't help but burst a lot ha ha ha's. The thing is with the second story that they were trying to satirize the famous horror franchise Psycho, with Boots Motel loosely based on Base Motel, the owner of the hotel being the main villain, and performing the shower scene from the movie while playing the screeching sound. I do actually wish they kept track of the motel involving Prince Charming being the actual threat to the duo, it obviously makes sense to cast him as the killer due to losing his mom, the fairy godmother, and using her magic wand that was left behind. It's no bright Ginny, but this is a story that can laugh all the screams away. With the last story, it does go back to the scary moments, and it's still really impressive. This is obviously spoofing another famous horror movie, The Exorcist, about a girl being possessed by an evil demon, and they had to bring in a professional to expel the monster inside of her. 
The Shrekers' jot down all the famous scenes a demon would do to a mortal in the movies, floating in the air, turning their head like an owl, and releasing a lot of vomit. But this satire work because it's Pinocchio who's acting crazy, and they fully display what this puppet can do. Since he's not a real boy in the Shrek franchise, he can do whatever he wants with his puppet abilities. There were no streets to hold him back. That's because he used him for his hovering trick. That's insane! I also love that it was the cricket that was messing with him instead of a real demon. You gotta keep in mind, it's supposed to be Pinocchio's conscience, and the conscience is a voice in our head that's supposed to tell us what's right from wrong. But the twist is, the bug ends up giving bad advice instead of trying to help Pinocchio on how to be a good boy. It's a really good parody, I'm not going to lie. When we get to the end of the special, I think it's really clever to let Shrek win the contest and doesn't show any signs of fears. You think when it came down to between him and Donkey, you thought Donkey would find a way to scare the ogre and become the king of Halloween. But that doesn't happen because Shrek doesn't need to be scared to be taught a lesson. This is not to say that Shrek isn't scared of anything. In the past movies, he was afraid of feeling alone or becoming a dad. But those fears have already been resolved during the events of the franchise. Unlike Shrek the Hulk, it's already established that Halloween is his favorite holiday and he enjoys all the tricks and treats that happen throughout the night. He had the Halloween spirit all along. The only legit criticism I would have of the special's concept is the build-up of Lord Farquaad's ghost. The characters have been going on and on that the abandoned Dulog is being haunted by the villain Spectre. And there's already a contradiction to that rumor. Shrek and Donkey have already faced Lord Farquaad as a ghost in the 3D show. And like the first movie, he was defeated by Dragon. So how would his ghost come back to haunt everyone when he was destroyed for good? Did he make a deal with Hades to get another chance with his unfinished business? Does that ruin the special? No, it's still a really good Halloween special. Scare Shrek List is one of the most enjoyable Shrek projects following the four main movies. The stories were funny, but also scary. It adds so many good satires from both fairy tales and horror movies, and the characters are still likable as they were in their respective movies. This is a Shrek special that is worth watching during the haunting season. It's a lot of fun. And I don't mean it metaphorically, or rhetorically, or poetically, or theoretically, or any other fancy way. It's fun straight up. It's the Halloween special that glitters gold and makes the shooting stars break the mold. On a scale 1 to 10, I give it 8 sugar zombies. The end. Wow, that was amazing. Thanks a lot, man. I hope I wasn't any trouble bringing you here. No problem. So, how do I get back home? How far away is it from here? Oh, about 5.6 million miles or so. Uh, what? Uh, clearly you have no idea what we monsters are capable of. Don't worry, I'll take you home. Oh, uh, thanks. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed this, check out these other videos, or feel free to like, comment, and subscribe for more upcoming reviews and other projects. I'll see you soon.